for today's video I'm going to show you how you can add 3D objects to your videos. This could be any video, footage you shot yourself with your phone or a special camera or just a clip downloaded from the internet. So for this example we're going to use a clip we've downloaded from Adobe Stock. We'll put a download link for this specific clip in the description below. So before we start we need to make sure that the frame rate of our scene matches the frame rate of the clip we're trying to track because that's very important for to get a good result. So once we selected our clip we go to the footage tab here on the right and then under footage settings right behind the resolution which is 1920 times 1080 you can see the frame rate which in this case is 25. Go to the output properties and adjust the frame rate. Then the first thing we need to do is set the frames. So click on set scene frames. This is going to make sure the length of our video matches the length of our timeline. So scroll out the timeline a little bit so you can get the whole timeline in one view. You can use your middle mouse button for this to scroll. Next, we're going to hit prefetch, which basically loads our video clip into memory. This is one thing we need to do for getting a good resolve and you can scroll easy to your timeline so it doesn't get laggy. The camera is moving, is sort of flying over this uh, grass field, I think. Yes. So it changes perspective throughout the whole scene. So to get a good tracking result, we need to change the model type to perspective. I'm going to leave these at the default values. If you have very blurry footage, there's a preset for that. It basically makes the tracker a little bit bigger. If you press Alt S, you get this extra search field. What it basically does is tries to keep the tracker within that range. Click on detect features and then to the bottom left click detect feature again. We're going to make sure we have enough trackers. So to add in a little bit more we need to decrease the threshold a little bit. So set this to 0.5. Now once you're happy with this click on the track markers button. You can also find it in this little menu on the left. Now hit escape up to this frame. So we scroll back in our timeline until we have enough trackers visible, good ones, which are yellow. Then we're going to press Ctrl L to lock those in. Now these are locked up to this frame, which is frame 102. So now we're going to add in new trackers to start tracking from, from this frame on. So again, select detect features, start tracking again. So hit escape, go back a few frames, press Ctrl L again, click on detect features and start tracking. Now this is the end of the clip. It's very uh, advisable to also track the video clip in reverse. So click on detect features, and start tracking back. Move your timeline back and click on detect features again. And one last time we're gonna press Ctrl L. And start tracking back again. So when it's done, you can see in the timeline that there are a couple of trackers who have a very wavy curve. These trackers are not usable. So in order to clean this up, you can select the curve 
and hit X to delete them. So click on solve, then click open cleanup and press filter tracks. Now you can fine tune this a little bit by adjusting the number here, but five, but five is just fine. Once it's done, press X to delete those trackers. Now to solve this footage, we're gonna enable keyframe. And this basically lets Blender choose two frames for keyframe A, keyframe B. You can add this manually, but you also can let Blender uh, find the right key keyframes. So select this option. Also make sure you add in focal length so we get a better result of the depth of our trackers. So this tracker here needs to be further away from the camera than the tracker which is in front of the clip. Now click on solve camera motion. Depending on the number of trackers we placed, it's going to take a while. So the more trackers you place, probably the longer it takes to solve. Now once this is done, you can see in the upper right corner on solve error number, everything below one is usable. And for the best results, you want to get below 0.5. In this case, it's 0.47. So this is actually pretty good. Now in order to get this solve error a little bit down, in some cases, not always, um, we can clean some tracks. When you click the clean tracks button, Blender is going to look for um, specific trackers. So in this case, we're going to look for an error solve of above one. Then make sure that it's Type is set to selected, so Blender only selects those trackers, so it doesn't automatically delete them. And click on clean tracks. And as you can see, there are two trackers selected, this one and this one. And when we select one, go to the track tab, you can see the average error expressed in pixels. So this one is above one, so it's selected. And we can delete this and also delete the other tracker. And once these two are deleted, we can click solve again. And if we're lucky, the solve error goes down. As you can see, this tracker has 0.3, so that's really good. You can manually select them and delete them by selecting them, press left mouse button, hit X and press delete. Now click solve camera motion again. Now it's going to solve the footage again without those two markers. And the solve error should be below 0.47. So as you can see, our new solve error is 0.45, which is a little bit better. Now, once this is done, we can set up our scene. If you look at the right upper corner, you can see a preview of our 3D space. And if you click on asset as background, we can see our footage. And first thing we need to do is set up a floor. In order to do this, we need to select three trackers. Now, keep in mind that we need trackers which are colored yellow because these were tracked at the same time. That's very important. So scroll to your timeline, look for a good moment and look for three yellow trackers and select them. Once selected, click on floor. As you can see, it changes a little bit. The camera pers perspective changes. It's pretty much lined up. It's not 100% but it's a good start. Then select one tracker to set as origin. This is basically the middle of our 3D space. And then related from that tracker, which we set in the origin, uh, set the X or Y axis. 
to line the x or y axis up with the origin. So this looks pretty good already. So there's one thing that we need to do and that is to set the scale. So in order to do this, select two trackers. You can use the same ones you already used, it doesn't really matter. And then hit set scale. And as you can see, the camera perspective changed. The camera moved a little bit back. Hit apply scale if you're happy with it and then press the setup tracking scene button. Now it adds in all our trackers. And if you scroll to our timeline, we should not see our trackers move. Next thing to do is we're gonna downscale our object because then we can see if the object is centered to, in this case, this tracker we selected which is colored orange. Also select another tracker. And as you can see, there's one tracker we selected, which is our origin. And one is set all the way back. So it's that tracker. Now, if you scroll to our timeline, our plane and cube, and also our ball, needs to stick to the ground. So slowly scroll to your timeline, check if, and if we have a good solve and everything is okay, the, objects, the object needs to stay in place. And as you can see, this is a pretty good result. Actually, this one is excellent. So we can use this motion tracking for the next part of this tutorial in which we're going to add a 3D object to this scene. And that object in this case is going to be the ball, which is going to roll down the road. So if you're interested in that, go watch it. Thank you so much for watching and I see you in the next video.